Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And it is Monday again, and it is time for the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and this is episode 75. We're making our way up there, really accumulating the numbers. I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hello, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Hello, folks, and welcome to the podcast. Did I say the date? This is December the 14th. Yeah, or, or we're working our way uh, through the month of December. The theme for uh, this episode is uh, social media marketing for artists. And we'll briefly talk about some of the different social media uh, assets that are available. But then we'll mainly talk about Pinterest. And I've uh, never paid much attention to Pinterest until recently when I came across some useful resources. If our listeners want to go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see the info links. And there's some very useful information there uh, for you to um, learn about social media marketing uh, for artists, specifically for artists. And um, just as a, uh, a rundown, or there are now multiple platforms. Of course, the big ones is Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And they talk a little bit in, this, in one of the videos. They talk a little bit about that. But then there's also Pinterest. I think that's how you pronounce it, Pinterest. Pins. And so that's the one that we're going to uh, concentrate on. So I'm going to uh, start the share up and uh, kind of walk walk us through a little bit here. And uh, Diane and uh, Constance, uh, did you uh, the, the information that was that was uh, recommended? I did. I'm going to try a bunch of stuff that um, different things that I found that she talked about yeah i haven't been on there in a long time so i i have to get everything's a lot of stuff's changed since i was on there last i really need to update everything are you you seeing my uh, pinterest board Mm -hmm. i do i see you have my pickles on there (laughs) okay and for our uh listeners we'll describe a little bit here and then we'll uh 
I also have screenshots for the uh, YouTube uh, video version of the podcast. But uh, it comes up with with Pinterest. What made it unique? And I had a hard time wrapping my uh, mind around this. You create what they call boards, which, like on a regular website, would be like categories or gallery, and then those that's where you put images in, and they call them pins. And you pin images. So what I've got on mine already, I the last two or three days I've been working on it. <clears throat> I've got a, a board where I call pins that inspire my uh, my art, and then I have my pulp radio art. Then I have my award-winning art, and then I have my regular CJKL artworks, and then I have what Constance mentioned. I have my artist friends' works, <laughs> and uh, let's open that up so I can show. And what really got me excited about this: when you uh, pin, as they call it, an image from anywhere on, on a, across the internet or across Pinterest, it provides automatically a link back to the source. Okay. You said that automatically, or do you have to set that up initially for it to do that? Because it never used to do that. No, that's a new thing. It does it automatically. That's what? It links back to the... No, it does that. I've been doing it for a long time. Recognize some of these? You see that right there, Diane? You know, yeah, when you see things. a photograph sometimes online and you'll move the cursor over the photograph, sometimes you'll see a thing that says uh, a little red thing that with a P in it. And that's, you, if you pin that picture, then it will link it back to. Now, here is something that I, I discovered. Okay. I went to uh, Constance. Uh, she was the first one I tried it with. I went to her, to her Daily Paint Works site. And on some of the sites, on the website, it has, you know how they have the little buttons for uh, uh, social media mm -hmm. sharing? They have a Pinterest button in there. And so if you click on that, then whatever image will come up. But then you get to select the board you want it to go on. Absolutely. And then it goes right on it. You go look at it if you want. But when I went to Diane's site, he didn't have that. So I'm thinking, okay, how am I going? That's what I said. They never used to have that on there. Well, I've been doing it for a long time. Maybe you have to have a, an account that's well, working or something to do it. Okay. Or here's the fun thing about it. Or Pinterest will, you download what is called a browser pin button. And for, oh, okay. and that's what this little P, I don't know, can you guys see where my pointer is at? That's what that mm -hmm. little, <laughs> Okay. Usually it's a little red P, a little red circle with a P in it. Some, it can be, actually they, they come in various styles. I don't know, you know, and over the time it's changed, but. In that right now, but watch when I go to Diane's site. You guys see? I don't see where you're at. <laughs> you see Diane's site now? Okay. Yeah. Now, you see this little P up here? It's, 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 it's lit, lit up which means I can pin. Now watch when I hover over Diane's image. Yeah. Look at that, Diane. There's a little pin. See the little pin that comes up here? And when I click save. It goes, yeah. And then sometimes it will, I've got it set up. Okay, it should ask me. Okay, it's pin. It should ask me where to put it. For some reason it's wanting to put it in pins inspirations. Pins that inspire me. You're yeah. supposed to pick a different that drop down menu. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, okay. I You're supposed to, to pick it. the fo fo folder, but you can move it once you get back into Pinterest. You can move it to the folder you want. We'll go ahead and put it in a different folder. Let's go back and look, and it didn't. It didn't put it in the. What it does, whichever last, it automatically whichever last pin you use, it puts it whichever last board you used it. Uh, it puts it there automatically, but that's okay. We're going to go back and show Diane how I grabbed her image. <coughs> but what is so cool is I like the link back. Okay. Uh -huh. so let me. 
that's where I've been advertising a lot of jewelry for a long time is on Pinterest because of the link back. And I even have things that I sell on eBay that I pin to Pinterest. I have an eBay board and I have an Etsy board on my, in my Pinterest. I just recently changed it over to business. I think this year. See, there it is. I think it was this year at the beginning. It was a regular and then I saw where it was. Yeah, there it is. I see it. <laughs> That's why I like- if you hit the little up arrow down here, I think it will let you put it in another board on another pin it in another board. No, not that one. Go up a little high inside the photograph. But, but click on the pencil up there. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see where that takes it. You can edit edit the pin. Oh, yeah, what you can do is resave it to a different. All right, no, that's not it. Yeah, you, yeah, you can hit the different. Okay, there, do the drop down. Yeah. And hit, put it in the one you want. Artist Friends Works. There you go. There it is. And now that... click save. That's gone. It's it's now in the other in the other board. Right. It's real. You know, it's, to me, it's very user friendly. I like Pinterest. The only thing which I haven't quite figured out yet is uh, how to, you know, gain followers, you know. And so I've got, I'm still, I have working, working through that. But just the be- very basic, just to build, to build your boards is, I mean, this is so easy. I could not believe how easy it was. Yeah, it is. And I don't even know how many boards I have. I have a bunch. So ha- have you been, uh, uh, gaining some uh, success as far as sales with, with your, your boards conscious since you seem to have the most experience with it. I'm a newbie to it, you know, so of the three no, of- I hear crickets all the time. <laughs> I hear crickets. I might sell something every once in a while, but I have never really, you know, all I can do is I do post to here and it, it's, he says that I'm having a lot more views than I had, last year at this time, which is, you know, like a hundred and something percent more. But, um, so I don't know if it's because of the Pinterest site. I just know that most of it, some of it comes from them. Some of it, most of it comes from me because, um, I quit using their advertising. It's these advertising because they were charging so much, you know, they would just take such a huge hunk of money out of whatever you sold. that wasn't even funny. So I quit using their advertising. And so it's gone back down, but still, you know, I'm not selling any more than I was before. So I'm good. what I do is when I list something, I will, or if I have a sale, I will go ahead and post the, you can make a post in your, on your Etsy store in Pinterest. What's your, what's your, I have an Etsy store board. What's your Pinterest board uh, called? CB. C. Bryson's Jewelry Designs. Okay. So I've got a... Um, B-R-O-S-N-A-N. C. B-R-O-S-N-A-N. Mm-hmm. And then this Jewelry Designs after that. There it there is. It is right there. <laughs> there it is. All right. I'm going to click follow. Yeah. Now, see, you got 456 followers, and you're following mm-hmm. 508. But look there, how many people view my page every this month? 3.5K. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Monthly viewers. I'm, I'm shocked by that. Then you better follow me, because I need to follow <laughs> Oh, I've already followed you. I found you and followed you today, earlier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And you're already being followed. <laughs> yeah, you got all yeah, you got all your stuff up here. Yeah. I've got yeah. I pretty much when I first started doing Pinterest, I wasn't using it for the jewelry side or the painting site. I was just playing. But then I, a few years ago it said that, you know, I read an article saying you need to clean up if you're gonna be a business, you need to clean it up and just use your work and so i have boards that are saved that that are hiding that i put stuff in that i want to keep and i don't want to be on my where everybody can see it that's that's a you saw that 
when you when you uh, when you convert to business, and of course, it doesn't cost you anything to convert to business. Analytics, and you can hide boards, and and mm-hmm. you, know, you can you can create uh, like groups. Like if we wanted to have, uh, if we were uh, decide to work on a collaborative uh, project, work on some art. Yeah, I've done collaborations with other people on there too. I took those down because. Yeah. They were about socks or a certain city or somebody something like that, and, and we we could we could hide you know it where it's not available to the general public, just the private. Mm-hmm. So there is just a lot of really cool features of Pinterest, and I, I'm just you know so excited that I'm uh, starting to get around to playing with it. All right, let me stop this share. So that you saw that Diane, how easy it is. Now, when it the, the thing is, you want to get that uh, uh, browser button on on your browser. Uh, you two use the phone, so it would probably I think it's already built in on on the phone on the phone app. But I I'm on the desktop all the time, so I had to. Um, I've got it on both computers, so whichever uh, and I use a Firefox browser, so whichever computer I'm on, what. And what is nice is I've noticed it uh, when at different websites that I, I come to, sometimes a little red uh, P will, will light up, which means mm-hmm. I, I could pin that site, you know, to my, uh, bo- to a board. And, and then a lot of times it's, it's grayed out and when it's grayed out, you know, it don't, yeah, it, you can't pin, but uh, anything graphically, anything graphic anything like a like a blog and and like i you saw i uh, i pinned our uh our our last episode from uh, youtube you know on onto our artist friends uh board you know i haven't done that i should do that yeah so you Make can a board with those on it so you can so and you can pin videos and 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 uh you know images and 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 text and i mean it, it has I pinned the snowstorm the pictures from the snow up i pinned a little video on instagram from the snow snow <laughs> thing snow day <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i know we got some for our listeners we got some snow down here in oklahoma today and the constant <laughs> photographs so <laughs> i love the snow <laughs> Uh, what's your, uh, opinions on, on the, uh, on that audio video, uh, Diane, you got any that I, I recommended? Well, I had a hard time. I was watching it today, but I had a hard time. I kept losing it. We were having storms here all day and it was, I don't know how much of it I actually <laughs> was able to hear. Um, oh, that's rough. Yeah. Cause it kept cutting out and you know, you lose track of what they're talking about and stuff by the time it comes back on. So I didn't really get a whole lot of it. I'll have to listen to it again some other day when we had better, better weather. That girl, (laughs) she was very, very thorough, but, uh, she, you know, talked real fast and, and it seemed like she had a lot of information on there. A lot of, she did. And for anybody, I would recommend for any of our listeners that are artists, if you're, uh, afraid, you know, you've got some, uh, you feel a little antsy and uh, you're not so sure about, you know, using social media, you know, for your art practice. Um, I'd recommend that you go to uh, uh, www.talkartpodcast.com and click on that uh, video link for, uh, it's a Vimeo video uh, for uh, marketing, uh, social media marketing for artists. And it's about two hours long. <clears throat> She covers all of the uh, various social media platforms and the, some of the do's and don'ts and uh, very, very thorough and detailed. I'm not even going to begin to try to discuss some of the stuff that she uh, talks about. She had a well, lot of know, resources sat, on there, too. So I, yeah, I sat here and <clears throat> made like 11 pages of notes on a little notepad. And then I took screenshots of the phone so I wouldn't have to spend a lot longer writing than <clears throat> I was writing. Says uh, the ones that had all the links to the different um, places online. It sounds like she has some really good places to go, do some investigating. So that's you know I, I kept all the screenshots so I'd know yeah, what the links were. 
emphasizes the the analytics for uh, of the different platforms that you can uh, utilize to uh, to kind of streamline and focus your uh, your your viewers or your <coughs> followers or you know whichever platform you're on that uh, so you can uh, make sure that you're putting the, the uh, you tailor tailor your content to uh, those specific groups in previous podcasts we talked about on uh, on instagram you know one uh, uh advisor uh, recommended that uh you know don't concentrate on getting large numbers uh because you may not be getting you want to focus more on people that that are more interested in uh in, in your artwork and everything another thing that i did not know when she talked about pinterest getting back to pinterest <laughs> Was it a lot, a lot of collectors and gallery owners and curators <clears throat> look at Pinterest because Pinterest is so graphic oriented, you know. It is, yeah. And even probably more so than Instagram because Instagram is, get, is starting to get really clogged down, you know. And Pinterest is still well, they're they're um, what does she call it? The algorithms are they keep changing them on Pinterest. On on uh, Instagram and Facebook, so it's hard to kind of keep. If somebody goes to you and looks at stuff, but they have to sort of find you and go look at it. But on Pinterest, if you see something you like, you can click to go look at the rest of the stuff, and it won't choose what you see. You see what they have by choice, you know. Whereas Inst- Instagram, it's a, it's a feed that scrolls, you know. And Facebook's the same way. So, but with Pinterest, you can go to an artist page and see what they've got and Absolutely. not have somebody interfere with what you're going to look at, you know, that which link, is different. The link back feature, you know, which is mm-hmm. really, and then the fact that you're, uh, you recommend, you know, uh, that you uh, visit other, uh, other uh, artists images and you pin. That's why I created that board called the uh, works of art that inspire me, you know? So, yeah. And, and then you uh, you click on the, the uh, become followers of them, and kind of like the way Twitter is, you know, you become a follower, and people use to follow you back and link. And so that's how you you build up uh, a uh, potential followers. But it's people that uh, like your work. You know, it's not just raw numbers. And then if, yeah. you, if you dig into the analytics stats that are provided uh, when you convert to a business account which is free of charge you know in fact every artist should convert their pinterest account to a uh, business so you can get all those uh, uh, access to all those analytics and you can just dig down drill down really deep in the analytics there is so much there once you start getting people that are, are viewing you know viewing your your works and everything but in my case I've had Pinterest since 2017, but didn't do anything with it. So I revamped it uh, the last two days. And all that stuff that I showed you, ladies, I've done within the last two or three days. <laughs> yeah, just completely. Yeah. Getting which, set up on a new platform takes a little time. Yeah. You know. But the thing that I wanted to uh, emphasize to our listeners, especially our artist listeners, um, the nice thing, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, Diana Constance, hear me constantly preach this. The Internet itself is a disruptor. It is a complete disruptor. You don't have to uh, kowtow. Or you don't have to be part of a certain economic group. You are, a, are any kind of a special group to get your art seen or recognized through the Internet you have access to whomever you want, but you have to put yourself out there. Case in point, um, I, my art within the last uh, couple years has been exhibited in gallery galleries in Europe. Here I am. And I live in Oklahoma city. I didn't know those people before I contacted them. The first one I contacted through a a Facebook contact I had made. And then once I was there, then I started receiving 
other information. And so uh, as a result, I've, I've got another exhibit coming up here in January, from January to March. I'll be in Zurich, Switzerland again. Um, my, uh, my last five commission have come from some kind of a social media contact either Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, and, and these, you know, and of course I do have an internet radio station, so some of them from those too, but they, on the internet radio station, they heard my little audio jig about I, I'm an artist and I do uh, uh, pet portraits, but they looked at my Facebook and they looked at my web, website through the internet, so before they contacted me. None of this would have happened if if I hadn't been out there putting my art out on the internet through websites, through social media, and blogs. And it's a lot of work. Or at least it looks like it's a lot of work. So you have to uh, kind of budget your time. And uh, some advisors, some consultants are... Uh, or art coach, you know, they recommend pick one or two platforms and concentrate on that. Depends on your time. You know, it depends on how technical, technically skilled you are, you know, but it does take a little bit of time, but it's worth it. It's, it does. It's how you, it's how you get, you know, get yourself out there. And before we wrap, you can get bogged down in the mire of the internet <laughs> platforms if you don't watch it because, <laughs> you know, trying to learn yeah. new every one of them are different about how they work you know so it's a matter of i think i tried to to do all of them at once and i ended up not doing a whole lot of them so i think it's better like she said to just pick one and work on that one until you get it where you want it and then move on to another one so yeah it's yeah. too confusing if you try to do all of them at the same time yeah you, you know. i was i was trying to spend one day on this one one day on that one and then i just got i couldn't do it because so I had to stop it and then just sort of pick the ones that worked best for me and use those. I myself, I have a little bit of a technical background, so it's a little bit easier for me. But I will admit, I have not even begun to really utilize all these platforms to their fullest extent. I'm just marginal here and there. But even that has been, has bared fruit, as they say, has been, has, has worked for me. So uh it's uh it's just a combination of hammering keeping at it keeping at it mm -hmm. yeah i mean you, you do have to manage your time too though because like you you need time to do your work your artwork yeah. so you can't spend all your time trying to do social media <laughs> otherwise you'd no, have nothing you can't. to show <laughs> you don't have any yeah. product if you do that yeah so you do have to manage you make have, product Yep. Yeah, you do have to manage how much time you spend on this stuff and how much time you spend on your artwork too. And I, there are you can go down rabbit holes if you're not careful. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. very easily. <laughs> that's a that's a good uh, segue. We'll uh, we'll pause for a brief break, and then we will be right back. Remember classic old-time radio? Old-time radio still lives at pulpradioart.com with Quiet Please, the thing on the Forble board. Quiet Please, the thing on the Forble board is a pulp radio art graphic novel inspired and based on the 1948 horror radio play. Utilizing an edited abridged version of the original script with Clyde's hand and digital illustrations, these scary, exciting stories will spark your imagination. Quiet Please, the Thing on the Forble Board is a true keepsake for the old-time radio fan. Available in printed copy or ebook at pulpradioart.com. That's pulpradioart.com. Welcome back. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, Episode 75 for December the 14th, 2020. And I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constant Bronson, and we are talking about some... Uh, uh, social media marketing for artists specifically pinterest now we're going to segue into a one of the other video recommendations with sergio gomez uh setting goals for 2021 so if you do get a chance to uh, just a little short eight minute 
clip. Did you get mm-hmm. that? Yeah, I did watch that one. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna. He has this every year. What he does, and uh, I haven't done it before. I was thinking about doing it, but I, I don't know. The yard's a mess now. I went and I signed up. I didn't watch any of the live videos, but I got the email. I can, and when we get done here, we'll go back and watch them. You know, and and uh, yeah, I signed up too, and I I did watch the videos, but um. Yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of managing your time, like I said a minute ago, Mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know that, I mean, he was talking more about um, not doing like, um, you know, January comes and everybody makes their pledges for the year and then a month goes by and you forget it all, not doing it that way. He was talking more about um, setting goals and, and, um, then breaking that in down into steps so that you can get stuff done. And that's, that's more how I work anyway. So that's, yeah, it's a more, more makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the whole elephant, then you think, Oh my gosh, they'll never get it done. But yeah. if you break it down into steps, it's a little more easier to manage, you know, not only that, but it, it, it also keeps you going at, at it longer. So, you know, you schedule it out instead of trying to do it all in the first month and then forgetting about it after that, <laughs> like, you know, people do for their well, Diane, January goals. You signed up for it. You're going to, I assume you're going to watch the rest of it. It's only like this rest of yeah. the day. I'm just there was a couple today. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe um, next week we might uh, come up with a set of goal. goals. <laughs> come up and uh, pledge a couple goals. Yeah. So instead of, yeah, constantly got a shock look on the face. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, uh, uh, I'll uh, I'll send you the link because he in his email that he sent out today of all the he says yeah it started today encourage uh, to uh, send, send the invitation so I'll send you an invitation Constance, so you can uh, all right. start getting it's it's free it's you know it's just four days this week and I need to something to get me back on track because I have been just you know, dead in the water for about a month now. <laughs> I need to get myself back on track. Pretty good with some goals there and, 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 but I've kind of slacked off. So that's what kind of motive I came across that. It kind of motivated me to let me look into it, see what he has to say, you know, and uh, maybe I can yeah, learn, learn something about that. Yeah. And his wife's on there too, talking about more of the psychological stuff, but she, today she talked about, um, decluttering basically your 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 mind and you know trying to clear out a lot of stuff that you're not that don't doesn't benefit you and think about you know more stuff that does instead of yeah i think his i think his wife is, is like a practicing psychologist or yeah or something yeah <laughs> yeah cool so because i've i've uh i've taken uh an occasional free webinar you know they offer mm-hmm She's uh, always always been involved, you know, with that. And uh, I did a couple live, you know, uh, Facebook live sessions with them. And, uh, you know, they, you can type in and ask questions. And they're, they were very, uh, very interactive. Yeah, of course, obviously all their, you know, they're, they're in the business of, of coaching. So, you know, there's a, there's a sales pitch in, in the end. But mm-hmm. – they do provide enough uh, useful free information, useful information, you know, that's uh, of enough to, uh, for, for us starving poor artists, you know, to, to <laughs> <use them. laughs> and we've all, oftentimes we've uh, referred to uh, Sergio's uh, videos. He's uh, provides quite a few, you know, videos and everything. So uh, we have any, any, anything else you want to talk about? Well, this is the last week for the show that my paintings in down in South Carolina. That show ends the 19th, so there's a few more days if you're in the area and like to stop in and see the show. It's still up. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, Austin, you got anything coming up here? Uh, uh, nothing's on sale right now, but I'm thinking about starting and selling the Etsy store again. Now I have the daily paint work site so i need to work on getting more paintings loaded onto that site but yeah okay that's well yeah like i said i 
I don't have anything for the month of December. I've uh, I entered entered in an exhibition online and I wanted to yeah, two of my pieces uh, earned a special recognition. I'll be posting that on Facebook. And then I've I've uh, been accepted into the exhibition that will be in uh, Zurich, Switzerland, uh, running from uh, the um, January through uh, March. And uh, the nice thing about the art box projects, folks, uh, they use, and they're the only ones, I, I guess other galleries are starting to do it now, are catching on. But they were doing this before COVID, and now that COVID has come about, it's even becoming more more uh, prevalent and uh, more reasonable. They have a combination in their gallery of physical works of art, but then they have these large monitors, and art, and they display the artist's digital version of their painting. And it's kind of like a uh, like a slideshow, you know. So I'm. I'm in there. Other works will will come up every few seconds or so, yeah, every minute or so, and it, and it it gives their whole purpose is uh, for uh, give emerging artists, you know, from around the world, an opportunity to actually say, I've been exhibited in the gallery, and this is my uh, oh my god, this is like my fourth my fourth exhibition with these folks. I was in the the in de- December. Of last year, I was in the uh, Miami during Art Basel week, and they were there, and their gallery was just right down the street from the main Art Basel Center, convention center, where the big boys were at. So I can say I've exhibited during Art Basel. Yeah. <laughs> and <Cool. laughs> I, I was in a, an exhibition which was planned in Barcelona, Spain, for March, but it was canceled because of COVID, postponed to October. Well, then it got postponed again. That's going to take place in May, hopefully, if COVID doesn't cancel it out. So that's that's on the agenda. And uh, I'll pray that we don't have it. I hope by May, I know you know that things are straightened out because that's rough. Yeah, I know. So. Uh, but it, it's really interesting that the combination they they do a really good job of uh, like in, for this one it's called uh, World World Art 1.1 or something like that and up in Zurich uh, Switzerland their gallery they're going to have like uh, normally they only have like two two monitors two large uh, flat screen monitors like uh, 80 85 inch monitors uh, in their uh, in their gallery year round. Uh, for this particular exhibition, they're going to have um, uh, three 85-inch monitors and four of the smaller 55-inch monitors throughout spread out wow. and set up, <laughs> along with actual physical works too. Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, yeah you know, looking forward to seeing what the you know the response is for that. And of course, it's always nice to send. They take photographs and send them to you so you know it's not a scam, you know. <laughs> I mean, really good job. They actually send you a um, a template of a portfolio for you to fill out information about you. And if a visitor is interested in your work, they print that out in color and hand it to them. And that's part of the part of the thing. And they, they attach what's called a QRC code onto your image on the monitor so you can just take it take their phone app and you know and that has all your contact information and everything and uh, they if uh, somebody if a collector wants to buy your work then they set they set the arrangements up but they don't collect any commission so that's kind of cool you know they that is nice yeah, mm-hmm. have a significant online presence too. So part of the exhibition, you you're in their on their Facebook page or Instagram. I mean, you're you're spread out everywhere, and it's a juried contest too. Uh, they will select the uh, the top ten, which they invite the artists. They pay for shipping for your artwork to and back to you, just to and back. If you're if they out of the top ten, of the top ten. They always select one 
that they will represent as a you know, represent the artist, it's, you know, like a standard gallery. Yeah. And then they also select the top 100, the top 100, what they call the finalists, 100 fi- finalists. Uh, they get a little uh, extra, extra treatment. You know, your, your art is, is displayed and, and uh, other, uh, they own a couple other galleries and then they display your art there. And, but just as a participant, your art is still displayed in the guy. It's just doesn't have the primary, you know, focus, but Hey, as an emerging artist, I mean, who would have thought that an artist in Oklahoma, Oklahoma city would be playing in Zurich, Switzerland, huh? <laughs> That's what I pinch myself. It's happened four times already. <laughs> well, you never know until you try. <laughs> Keep trying. Okay. I rambled on enough. Let's uh, close this episode out. This is, you've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 75 for December the 14th, 2020. And you've been listening to Diane Hunt, Constance Bronson, and Clyde J. Kell ramble on about art and social media and Pinterest and whatnot. And I really hope you enjoy uh, listening to this podcast. And I'm going to say good night to uh, Diane and Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for stopping in. Good night, folks. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, give us some love. Give us a, a, a five-star rating or and some thumbs up. All right? Good night, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.